best friend is my savior Maybe it's a little bit crazy that a king would give his life for me Maybe it's a little bit crazy but I've heard my stranger Cause some things you gotta see by faith Hi Connect Kids, I hope you are doing well. It is so good to be with you in this year 2021. I must admit it would have been a whole lot better if we could be together in person at the church. I was actually, I was there the other day and I was cleaning behind um, the info desk. I'm not sure if you remember it in the hall um, and you would go in to, you would go there to sign in and I was cleaning up and I thought, oh, how did I take this for granted just on Sundays being with all of you and having our time of worship together and spending time together on Sundays and Fridays? I miss it so much, but I really, really trust. And let's pray together that this COVID thing won't stop us from meeting together online and hopefully later in the year, God willing, we will have a time where we can start meeting together again. Because that is really, really what I want to do. I want to see all of you so badly. But we're going to make the best of a difficult and challenging situation. And we're going to be having church at home. And we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this year. Um, I'm going to add some times um, during our lesson where I'm going to get you to stop and think. Um, you know, last year, and I've said it quite a few times, I actually like to say it the whole time because it's something I need to remember too. I've said we mustn't just be a hearer of the word, we must be a doer of the word. We mustn't just hear what we're learning at church and forget it. It's actually the most important things we think about for the week. So when you think we must read God's Bible and do what he says, read and do, hear and become a doer of the word. And so I'm going to get you to stop and have some th times either to think and chat with your parents if they close by or just to think for yourself maybe I'll get you to make some notes um, but we've separated children's church into older children and younger children and you're the older group and so we can go a bit deeper this year another thing I want us to do is really start looking at the Bible and learning a little bit about, about it I don't know if you can see my dog down there uh, this dog's name is Cosmo and Cosmo come here my boy I'm going to tell you something about him a little bit later. Um, I'd, I've used our other dog, Cleo. She's the girl. Now, I have to tell you something about her. You know what? In the holiday, she had a bit of a bad holiday. I'm just telling you some of our family news. And in this holiday, we she had used to get something called Happy Tail. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. And Happy Tail is if a dog gets really excited and they knock their tail everywhere, they actually can knock it raw. So there have been some times where it looks like a war scene in our house. Like there's, there's blood all over the walls and it's actually because her tail's gone raw. And you see everywhere where her tail's hit, there's like this strip of blood and then I've got to go and wash it off. Anyway, we went to visit my parent-in-law. Um, so that's my husband Jono's family and... They, my dog Cleo loves them so much. So you know what happened is that within a few minutes of being there, she had ripped her tail open, like the bottom part, and there was blood everywhere. And we tried to make it get better. We tried to do everything we could. And you know what? On Christmas, no, sorry, New Year's Eve, she actually had to have some of her tail removed. I'll show you another time, but it really, it broke my heart. But she actually had to go to the vet and have this part because it got so infected. So my poor, beautiful little Cleo um, only has about three quarters, maybe half a tail left. Um, but she's still gorgeous, so she'll be featuring in some of our videos. And Cosmo, who was walking in and out, and I wanted you to see, I'm going to tell you a bit about them today. But I'm still telling you about Sunday school. I just got a bit sidetracked. Um, so we're going to have these moments where you can stop, you can think, you can consider things. I might get you to write some goals for the week. Um, we want to go deeper into God's word. We want to learn more about this Bible that we're having. And this is a beautiful opportunity. So we're going to be doing a series through Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. So today we're going to be doing a little bit. First, we're going to start with an introduction to the book of Ephesians. And then what I'm going to do afterwards is I am going to then, um, after doing it, I'm going to do an introduction into the armor of God because that's what we're going to be looking at. So that's where we're going this morning. We're also going to be ending in a time of worship, um, but I'm so glad that you're with us and let's get going. So guys, here I am behind the, the screen 
and I'm going to get stuck into Ephesians. Now, I find that when I know a little bit more about a book of the Bible, it makes it a bit more exciting. So I'm going to show you a few pictures. It's actually from my personal photo album of a time when I went to, to Greece and Turkey, actually with Shelley, who's a pastor at the church, although she wasn't at the church yet. And um, Ephesus is actually in modern day Turkey. Now, you may know some friends in Turkey. Maybe you've been yourself. Maybe you've seen pictures or learned about it at school. But Ephesus has a lot of the churches of Revelation that the Bible speaks about. And this is what it looks like nowadays. It's really beautiful. The closest town to Ephesus is called Kushadasi. Really pretty, nice beaches. Um, here are some little Turkish boys. I won't go too. There we go. I'm sure they're adults now, um, but I'll cut their faces off so you can see. But normal life like, like you and I and beautiful ancient ruins. And then I had the privilege of going to Ephesus and that's my ticket that I saved. I used to save everything. And um, there we go. Here are some postcards. Now you can go to the ancient ruins of Ephesus and you can see something fascinating. Can you see there? There was a very well-preserved library that contained 15,000 scrolls. Now in those days, having scrolls meant that you were a rather fancy town. And they were port town, and in the, and in the ancient days, port towns were quite exp um, were quite valuable because they would have the ships coming in, they would have traders coming in. If you see here, this amphitheater. Sadly, some of the things that happened in amphitheaters in olden times weren't very nice. Um, but it was interesting that the city has faced earthquakes. Um, pillaged, been pillaged and pilfered, but it's still, you'll have to Google those words if you don't know what they mean, um, but it still remains, and um, there's some beautifully well-preserved ruins. Okay, so moving on, I'm doing this because I'm actually using my thumb to put some clothes on this lady, this ancient statue, um, and this is Athena Nike or Nikki Forrest, and that was my surname. That's why I'm standing next to it and laughing. It's not my surname anymore. Um, but can you see, this is the lady that inspired the Nike swish. You know, just do it, Nike. Can you see the swishes there? So you've learned something new. But it actually tells you something about the town of Ephesus because they worshipped many wrong gods, false gods. They worshipped worthless statues like this. There was another one called Artemis. And what actually happened is that when Paul went into the city and people were becoming Christians, one silversmith called Demetrius got so angry that he tried to, he just wanted to get rid of Paul because he knew what he used to do is he would make silver coins um, with Artemis on and he would sell it and everyone, because they thought these gods could save them, then they would buy them. And so the crazy thing is that, that Paul, all of a sudden they realized that what they were doing was wrong. And then his business went down, so he didn't like Paul much. Um, if you look here, um, and if you've seen the sign for medicine in the ancient, um, um, well, this is where it comes from, but you will see this in sometimes in medical kind of, um, in medical emblems and that sort of thing. So they practiced medicine in those days too. And that is Shelly and me sitting on the toilets. It's a very strange thing. And I promise you, I'm not using the toilet. This isn't a dodgy, dodgy thing that I'm showing you, but it is quite weird. And what they would do is they would have all the public toilets in the same place. And all the men would go and sit there and they would have big old conversations while going to the loo. That's fairly strange. So that is Ephesus. And you can see that it's a really interesting old place. And that... Paul, when he went there, he must have been quite impressed with the, the town, but what impressed him more was the church. He had spent three years living there um, before he wrote this letter to the Ephesians. So it was a church that was very close to his heart because he didn't spend a long time in, in a lot of places. And he loved this church so much that he wrote them this letter, not to really um, because there was anything majorly wrong, but because he wanted to encourage them. He wanted to let them know that Jesus was greater, um, greater than the situation he was in. He actually wrote this letter from prison. And the crazy thing is you don't see him moaning about his situation too much, but rather he writes a letter to strengthen the church. And isn't that amazing? We find ourselves in difficult situations today. And maybe we should be keeping our eyes on Jesus more and forgetting more about the situation around us and focusing more on Jesus. 
And then it also, he was so excited about these people, about the church, about the church being the bride of Christ. That's a picture that God often uses in the Bible. And there's something very special about a bride. And there's very something very special about God's church. And if you know and love God, you are part of his church. And he has a special plan for you as a member of his church, his special bride. And we're going to be learning about that. Okay, guys and girls, so this is Keo, whose tail was removed. And she's just with me. She's helping me clean the, um, clean the laundry. And the one thing, I've got two kind of stories that I want to tell you. And the first is that I'm going to be filming each week, unless I think that there's another more exciting place to film. I'm going to be filming in my laundry, and you know why is because our laundry, it's kind of a bit of multi-purpose. I'll take you for a guided tour another time. But um, we also have a double bed in here for when my mom comes to stay. We're having another friend coming to stay for a while. So we've got like a kettle, a microwave, a little coffee machine, um, a few nice things to make it more comfortable. But I also store some of my things in here. And so I was cleaning out and I was getting so excited because as I was cleaning my laundry, I was going, oh, I didn't know I had that. Oh, I forgot about this. I don't know if you ever have those moments in your home. Um, I had some of those moments and I thought, you know, it's like that as Christians. Sometimes we forget everything that God has put into us, everything that we have as a Christian, and we forget how powerful we actually are. And that is one of the main reasons I want us to talk about the armor of God, because there's this power that we as Christians have that I think we don't often think about. Maybe we take it for granted. Maybe we forget the power that we have. Um, but the other thing we're going to be talking about is just how God's kingdom. So we as Christians, we part of this very powerful and strong kingdom. And I, w I got thinking about this a little bit more the other day. I woke up really early, it was about five o'clock, and I decided to go for a run, and it was just, it was a little bit dark. You know, as the seasons, we've now passed um, the, the summer solstice, and we're now moving closer, sadly, to winter, because I love summer, so I'm a little bit sad about that. Um, but we, I went, I started running, and I didn't realize that it was still a little bit dark, and so I had my two dogs with me and I'm running and I run past this forest. Now, just remember, I'm an adult, so I can go running alone. You guys mustn't do it. You're young. You need to be protected. I can protect myself. Well, I thought I could, but then this is what happened. I got a little bit scared. Don't worry. There's nothing scary to the story. I got scared in my head. Um, I was absolutely safe, but I ran past this forest and all of a sudden I started to feel, hmm, it's dark. It's a little bit scary. This feels a little bit creepy. Am I okay? And then I looked down and I looked at my two big dogs that I was running with and I thought, I am okay. These dogs would protect me. They're actually quite vicious. If anyone tries to come to our gate, you're, they scare people so much. And so all of a sudden I realized, huh, I'm running with my dogs. I've got nothing to be afraid of. I'm absolutely fine here. These dogs are huge and they'll protect me. And straight away, I was, my heart was at peace. And then I thought about God's kingdom, that we as Christians, sometimes we feel afraid of situations. We feel like, oh, is this really happening? I'm all alone. How can this be? I'm not feeling safe. But we forget our most powerful weapon, that God is with us. Just like I forgot that my dogs were with me and that, of course, God was with me. But for this, I just, I looked down and I saw my dog straight away and I thought no one would, would take me on with these vicious dogs. Um, we have this great, big, amazing God, creator of the universe, who's with us all the time. And so often we can be scared. Um, you may be scared of the devil. If you've heard about the devil, you might be scared of situations in the world. You might be scared of even thoughts that you have in your own head. We forget how great and mighty God is. And that's also why we're going to be learning about the armor of God so that we can know the power that we have when we as Christians walk with God. So we're going to be speaking a little bit more about that. So that's the one of the main reasons we decided to speak a bit more about God's kingdom. As I said, you can see all my, my clutter and my laundry. We're going to be digging around my laundry over the next few weeks and finding cool things that remind us about the armor. I'm sure I can find a whole lot more here. The last thing I want you to do as we finish off is just take a few moments to either write down or think about how you feel about your relationship with God. Do you feel like it has changed your life? Do you feel like you are, 
any different than maybe if you weren't a Christian? Would your life be very different? How do you feel about this all? Do you feel like you're just a Christian maybe because your parents are and it's just what you've done? Um, what do you feel about it? Maybe if your mom and dad are there, you can have a discussion with them. If you've got a brother or sister that's around or a friend, you can talk about kind of what it feels like. The good and the bad. There's no wrong or right answer here. It's just time for us to kind of get thinking a little bit more. And then we're going to end with a verse just for you to read and to encourage you for the rest of the week before we move into a time of worship. Maybe it's a little bit crazy, but I've heard 